This is video number 15 and it's about reliability in psychological research. Reliability is consistency. It is about whether a psychological test gives you the same answer every time you do it or whether if different people do the same psychological test if they get the same answer every time. We can illustrate reliability and the related concept of validity by looking at these targets. The target on the left and the target in the middle are reliable tests because the archer firing those arrows is getting the same result every time, hitting the same spot. Now, the one in the middle is also valid. The one on the left is reliable but not valid because it's not getting the right answer. It's the same every time but it's the same wrong answer. The one in the middle is reliable and valid. The one on the right, on the other hand, isn't reliable. That archer is not hitting the same spot every time. So reliability is about consistency and repeatability in psychological measurement. All right, there are two forms of reliability that we need to know about. The first one is inter-observer reliability. So supposing that I get two observers uh, to measure the length of a pencil and um, providing they've both got a decent ruler, frankly they're going to arrive at pretty much the same outcome and that's because there's no room for opinion in measuring the length of a pencil. There's no room for um, subjectivity or bias. If on the other hand I ask two observers to observe a human being then there's really plenty of room for opinion, isn't there? Uh, and people bring their own subjective opinion and bias to the table. So, for example, supposing I ask two observers to do Ainsworth strange situation uh, observing a baby and whether or not it's willing to explore a room. One person might really like babies and say, yes, that's a happy baby who's willing to explore the room. The other one might not be well disposed towards infants and might reach a different conclusion about the baby's willingness to explore. So, if the two observers agree with one another, then I have high inter-observer reliability. And if they disagree with one, one another, then I have low inter-observer reliability. The other form of reliability that we need to know about is test-retest reliability. And this is about if I give a research participant a test, and then I give the same research participant the same test on a different day, will I reach the same answer? on both days. For example, if I give a person an IQ test and it measures their certain IQ and that person comes back next week and I give them the same IQ test again, the question is will they get basically the same answers right? Will they test at the same level of IQ? And if they do, then I've got high test retest reliability but if the person scores as a high IQ on one day and a low IQ on the other day, then obviously the test is no good and it, I have low test retest reliability. Okay, so assessing reliability. We need to know how to assess whether reliability is high or medium or low. And for this, we use a correlation and a scattergram. So we can best illustrate this with, the, with an example. Supposing I get a class of students to do an essay, an A-level essay for me, and I photocopy all their responses and give Mr Lemon a pile of the photocopies. Then I mark the essays independently and he marks the same essays independently without looking at my marks. We give them each student's essay a mark out of 16. So first of all, I can draw up a table uh, for what each of these students got. And we can see that between myself and Mr. Lemon, there's, there's, there's some agreement and there's some disagreement. Well, we can really get to the bottom of how strong the agreement between me and Mr. Lemon is about how reliable our marking is by drawing a scattergram. And I'm going to put my marks on the x-axis and Mr. Lemon's marks on the y-axis and plot every student's mark 
on this scattergram. And we can see that although there are some disagreements, there is broadly a high degree of agreement between myself and Mr Lemon because this scattergram is showing um, a strong positive correlation. Not, not everybody. What about this student here? Uh, they've, uh, Mr Lemon has given this one uh, 15 out of 16 and I've given them 3 out of 16. Um, so th there might be some reason for that. Maybe, you know, they've given Mr Lemon some chocolates and maybe, um, you know, um, they've, they've caught me on a day when I'm in a bad mood or something and I've put them in detention and I'm not well disposed towards that student. And this kind of thing happens because I'm a human being and so is Mr Lemon and we are subject, subject to bias and subjectivity, and we're not completely objective. But using a scattergram allows us to get to the bottom of the reliability between us and how objective we are. I could also do test, retest reliability using a scattergram as well. And to do that, what I do is I give a group of students uh, an essay, and then I'd give the same group of students either the same or a related essay on a different date, a week later or something, and I plot the marks for the two essays on a scattergram. And that would allow me to assess, test, retest reliability in the same way. Okay, so that was assessing reliability. And in a moment, we're going to have a look at how to improve reliability. But first, it is time for this week's random psychology fact. This week's random psychology fact is According to Microsoft, humans have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. Okay, how do we improve reliability? Well, the key to improving reliability is to reduce ambiguity. To reduce the ambiguity in the questions, to reduce ambiguity in the minds of the people assessing the behaviour, to reduce the ambiguity of the situation. And the way that we do this, most of it, is frankly just good investigational procedure, just good research methods. So, for example, we want to make sure that we have clearly operationalised variables or behavioural categories. And then when an observer is observing a behaviour, there is of such a clear and unambiguous definition of what they're looking for that there really can't be any mistake. And that two people, when they're observing the same thing, are more likely to agree on what they're observing and therefore to yield reliable um, observations. Another thing we want to do is to reduce ex extraneous variables. So to make sure that the behaviours um, are taking place in, in the same temperature, to make sure that there's no background noise, um, to make sure that they happen at the same time of day, etc. And this reduces the amount of a kind of random variation in the data and that will increase its reliability as well. Also, we want to make sure that the procedures are standardised, that the instructions that different people, um, different research participants receive are standardised. So everyone goes through an exact standard procedure, so it's the same for everyone, and that's more likely to yield reliable data. Also, frankly, we should have more than one observer or more than one rater. And if you have three or four raters, you can see that maybe most of them will agree with one another, but there might be one person who's on a different planet as far as their observations are concerned, in which case that person uh, could be sent for training to bring them into line with the other ones, or alternatively, we could just discard uh, the observations from that rater altogether. Training of observers, training of interviews, interviewers, is a good way to increase reliability and to reduce ambiguity, to make sure that everybody knows what they're meant to be assessing and how they're meant to be assessing it and how they're meant to be scoring it. Also, another way to increase reliability is to make interviews or questionnaires more structured and less unstructured, less freewheeling, with more structured questions. And that, by the way, is also going to yield more quantitative data rather than qualitative data and to increase the reliability of the procedure. And finally, uh, we can look at a questionnaire or a test on a question-by-question -question basis. And, for example, um, in an intelligence test, there might be um, some questions which are hard 
and most people get them wrong and some questions which are easy and most people get them right but there might be questions in there which are kind of random and that people just either the right uh, answer them right or wrong irrespective of how intelligent they are in which case we want to remove specifically those unreliable items from the test or the questionnaire and leave only the reliable ones in there and this is called deselecting some items from a test. So these are the ways that we can improve reliability. Remember, overall reliability is about consistency and it's a highly desirable characteristic in psychological investigations.